Just like you, you knew that. <laughs> You're doing good, Mr. String Bean. Yeah. Yeah, are they, are they taking out your ears? I'm just on a little mud duck, man, so I, I ain't got a lot going on. But Stream Bean, man, take care of business. Oh, All right, man, I got you. Plug in the ears, Stream Bean. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm a mud duck too, Stream Bean, but I just do what I can. But anyways, you're getting out. The funny thing is, Stream Bean, I should be doing a video game right now because if they're plugging your ears, Stream Bean, all I hear is you. I knew that was going to happen. I heard World Radio 6-1, but whoever's around you, I didn't hear him. You know, whoever was talking to you. But I got 6-1 in there. He's uh, got soul control right now. Hi, String Bean. Hey, man, you're doing great, man. I got goosebumps all over knowing what you're talking on, man. She's crystal clear. Sounds great. Well, actually, you sound probably identical. Anyways, I'll let you go, man. String Bean, it's my pleasure, bud. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that thing is still working the way it does. Enjoy it. I like my little barefoot mobile. Now, I, I did put a 200-amp alternator in my Jeep. It didn't need it. it well, kind of. starting to make noise. I did the idler pulleys, you know, and the little tensioner. So I figured, ah, it needs an alternator. So one of these days, man, we'll fire that thing back up. Stream Bean down there by that TJ border. My pleasure, man. 163 Mud Duck Station in the desert. We're clear and moving on. Hey, uh, if you're checking out any of those videos, man, uh, you don't need it, but uh, it's there, man. It's, it's available. I'm, I'm using one right now. I was up super I got up, man, put my slippers on, my underwear came back to the shop. It's not that far for me to walk. I'm not being weird, but I was in here again, man, until like 3 o'clock in the morning playing with radio stuff again, playing with knobs there, string beans. <laughs> hey, uh, 163, do me a favor and tell string bean that I said hello. And good morning down there on San Diego. Hello. Right, right, right. Yeah, somewhere down the line, we, I'm, I'm not passing the buck or the puck, but this is the way that usually goes. When you first get it and you're playing with it and you start flipping switches, that happens. The easiest way, Stream Bean, to rectify that scenario is uh, get a big pen that kind of got that little topper thing on it, take it off, turn the radio on, or, you know, turn it off. Use that pen, because I know you got big fingers. Push all those buttons in at the same time time and do a factory reset but first turn the clarifier knobs exactly where they go wait till it says reset end then turn it back on from scratch and you'll be fine okay It's, it's easy. It's easy, Stream Bean. It really is, man. Uh, whatever you can find that'll fit in there that's plastic so nothing gets scratched, just turn, just hold them in. And uh, it'll say, I forget, it, it, it's reset. And then sit back for, it depends on what's been done to the radio, you know, afterwards, uh, for the reason it's doing that, and how long it takes. 
the CMOS or the computer to reset, and then it'll say reset end. Turn the radio back on, and that'll be a factory reset from scratch. That sounds like a complicated radio. Hey, good afternoon, Tate. Well, me with the zero pilot has the throttle is back on. It's easy. Hey, man, I almost forgot there, John. Hey, uh, you got a phone call, man, uh, four fingers and a thumb from uh, Motor Mouth Mall. He's saying hello to you there, String Bean. Right there, John. He's saying hello right back, man. He put the emphasis in that voice. You copy? Back to you, Motor Mouth Mall. Nothing. Can't for it. I give you a lot. Appreciate you rolling that five and keep it all the way alive. And um, by the way, I got a good water gate going over here with you on here. You're really strong. You're up here like a nine S uh, S in it. And uh, all by yourself, crystal clear, crystal clean. So I'm going to post it up on uh, YouTube later tonight to bring. I appreciate that there, Mr. Uh, John Motormouth Ball. Yeah, I moved away from power lines, man. I moved away from the power lines. I'm like 270 uh, feet or something like that, exactly south of where I was located, the exact same system. So maybe, you know, uh, we could even talk about this in the future, about your, just your location in relation to power lines and AC. What's 60 hertz? Uh, the 11th power of 27? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's uh, you know those suckers will cause all kinds of grief and havoc. And um, that last thing you want to do is be next to them for multiples of reasons. You know, uh, but uh, receive is usually the primary reason. But they do affect transmit as well. So um, yeah, it's good to uh, good to be away from the power lines. So break. We got you know NTB in, in sound NTB not on my signal but uh, I could hear a lot better too it's, it's just compared to my Jeep. So that video that I got you know comparing the V5H to my Jeep the quarter wave I'm gonna have to redo it I guess. I still have a transformer to my east. It's about I didn't step it off. It's about 120 feet and another uh, power line. You know, both power lines are poles. They're parallel with me but there's nothing going over me to my west so there's really nothing to my south and there's a couple like phone lines and other power lines to my north but about 100 foot away so here's where we sit man you know just getting away from the power lines and I just I talked about this in one of my videos to see if anybody would notice the difference and yes sir back to you right, sure oh very cool man that's uh, good to hear you got some uh, some uh, positive results from moving away from the dug on power lines and uh, fortunately, I don't have any of those to contend with. The only thing I have to contend with from time to time, depending upon the season, <laughs> is the neighbors and their, uh, their grow lights. And um, I got the little box to rectify that situation. Whenever I pointed the big beam antenna north, I got this in my receiver. And, um, you know, I, I kind of sort of um, uh, rectified that with a little MFJ uh, what do you call it? The 1025 box. And uh, now I can kind of bring in another signal and mix them together and null out the noise. And and uh, it, it works wonders. So, yeah. <clears throat> noise and power lines and neighbors can be a nightmare. They're very Yes, 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 yes. Where I sit, I'm, I'm actually, I'm in a, an RV park. It's not like very, very populated, and there's nothing as an RV within so many feet. They have about 60 feet to my north, nothing to my south. I'm up against a metal building. But there is other RVs around me. It's not, you know, old junk. It's all decent stuff, but I'm not sure, you know, unless I go look at it or know the name brand and the model number, I'm not sure if it's going to be a pure sign, quasi, or square rave, you know, inverter. I have no idea. And then there's some people that have some little lights outside, you know, with the little chargers on them for uh, night light. So it's just a matter of time that I get it all figured out. It's not like I don't have enough to do every every single day, but so far, so good. String bean, I'm not ignoring you, but As long as you're talking to your radio, that's all that counts. That great signal on you. I wish I was doing a video game because I was embarrassed to do video games before with all the noise that I had. You know, I was, when I pull in my driveway, I have to hold my, my hand over my eyes so I couldn't see the transformer. I was embarrassed. Here's Slayer. The sand pile we got in the kitchen is coming your way. Well, it was only up running 30. Ooh, yeah, I hear old man Oklahoma out there. What am I running? 
120. Ooh, I got a bunch of reflected power on this frequency. I should be on channel six. Man, I got all kinds of reflected power here. Um, I don't belong up here. <laughs> Let me try the five H wave. Hey, uh, uh, it might have better SWR on this frequency. It may not work as well as a little bit as well as a beam, but it might be a bit better on the SWR. Hey, uh, uh, I'll be right back. 163 hard drive, motor mouth mall, step and switch over to the five H wave ground plane. Still hear me, and I'll get off this kid. I mean, to be tying it up, but I've just recently discovered something myself. I'm sure others have done it, don't know what they know what they're doing, but I'm pretty broad, man. At least that's what my radio sees. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. But the thing is, is my antennas resonant. All right, man, yeah, keep them on. Uh, something went wrong out of your radio, man. <laughs> you don't need that motor mouth mall stream being everybody out there at DX land. It was my pleasure. 163 Mud Duck Radio in the Desert. We're clear and moving on. Okay, 163. I switched over to the 5 h wave ground plane. I had a little bit of SWR uh, that was kind of bothering me, so I, I opted to switch over to the 5 h wave here on 27285. So I don't know if that makes a difference on your end, better or worse. I know you're on the 5 h wave, so maybe it went up. But uh, anyway, I, I have much better SWR on the 5 h wave than I did on the, uh, on the beam to break. Your signal seems to be about the same, but, you know, there was a time lag, and time is everything in DX, so it seems like your amplitude slightly went down, you know, your modulation. Just barely, but, you know, only because you asked me, right? Good for it. Right, don't pay no strain. All right, good deal. Well, I feel better not seeing a whole bunch of reflected power, and I, I don't have this whole system tuned up for this frequency. It's all optimized for 28, and it really does make a big difference. I mean, sorry, optimized for 6. And it really does make a big difference as to where I talk there. So, anyway, all good. A uh, 163 hard drive, motor mouth ball waving right there right now. And I got the uh, got the video gate rolling, so I'm a listener. You'll see how wide I am compared to how wide you are. Let me narrow mine up here. At this point in the video gate, I'm going to narrow the audio up a little bit and uh, see. Or at 6.5 kilohertz, I'm going to go all the way down to 4.5 right here. There we go, 4.5 kilohertz. Now I'm within the 10 kilohertz bandwidth, 9 kilohertz total total band spread, and I was out 6.5 kilohertz or 13 kilohertz total band spread. So anyway, I narrowed it up a little bit there. I don't know if that made a difference on your end. I can hear the difference. I personally less on that the helm of the uh, flex or the uh, SDR radio. I, I use actual test equipment. And I've seen my recording on a couple others that were using it, and not bad. I know that I will go out almost higher frequencies, almost six, but I try to keep it as narrow as possible for the majority of the reason that are on there. Listen, as you can as well as I have, it, well, it's, it's, it's electronics, it's physics. You keep them between the lines, you're going to slice them and dice them back to you. Yeah, I tend for it. Well, I had it a little bit wider because I was catering to a particular person the last time I was talking that was running a wider IF and it, it sounded better. But uh, you're right, you know, you want to keep it uh, within the, the lines and keep it on channel for those who are running uh, standard radios. And uh, yeah, you're definitely where you say you are. And uh, yeah, I, I have an SDR receiver because I use it for receiver as well as to be able to see the bandwidth. And, and no, I don't get all hung up on using my Hewlett Packard Spectrum Analyzer for looking at bandwidth because the, the two of them really, uh, they, they work well with each other, each other. they jive. In other words, if you keep the levels right and attenuate the signal and keep everything apples and apples, the uh, Hewlett Packard looks the same as the uh, Flex SDR 1500 that I have. So anyway, um, but I'm not saying I, I'm not getting into the whole NIST accuracy, and I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying I'm looking at your signal, and I see that you were narrower than I was, so I narrowed mine up to match closer to what yours is. So anyway, that's all I'm saying. I realize you got the whole NIST calibrated workbench and all the fancy cool stuff, and that's all good. I wasn't I wasn't getting into a battle about better equipment or worse equipment. I know I'm working a cheesy little SDR compared to your good stuff. I was just making a comparison on what I saw in bandwidth on the receiver that breaks.
Yeah, I wasn't trying to get into that old motor mouth mall. I can hear that in your voice, man. We're not, I'm not trying to argue one bit. But, I, yeah, I do like looking at it and knowing what it is. <laughs> exactly what it is, you know, because you start putting different antennas in, and if you go wider from the point you're looking at the SDR or however you guys set, you might see things that are different, things that will cause more issues. Anyways, yeah, the SDR is the flex stuff. I, one of these days I'll get to it, but I dig my older equipment with the the CRTs, I really do. No motor mouth ball, I wasn't doing uh, any like that, but like I was saying, without being behind the helm and knowing without every single connector, how it's soldered, etc., you, know, you notice that I do it with that little derp. Well, West Texas Mobile, there you go, hell, coming your way. And it's singing. I spent a lot of time, over four years of uh, radio. You know, what I learned in broadcast engineering versus this real world here, which I never... Okay, Roger, 513 in the Mobile, 288, over here in the Arizona desert, take care. Uh, the real world, man? Uh, I dig the real world, man. My little Jeep, man, that Francis antenna, you know, it's an old school, it's a good antenna. Uh, the halfway length two wire between the antenna and uh, the radio, the uh, grounds, the, uh, the ground, the counterpoise. Are, but DC potential is being equal. You hear it, man. I dig it. I love my little Jeep. It's 100 continuous AM watts at 80 on sideband. No, I can't walk on nobody, but you can hear it, you know. So, like you were just saying, you get it all tuned in. Resonance, 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 resonance. There's a point in the break equation where power will overpower resonance, but when you're low power, you can't beat it. But, uh, what? Well, absolutely. Well, you know, it's like a bell. I, I, I like to use the analogy of a big bell. And if you got the bell tuned to 440, you know, like an A, um, you know, and you, and you try to ring it, it's going to ring at an A. And if that happens to be 27.285, it's going to ring at 27.285. And the antenna ain't nothing more than a bell. And if the thing's not resonant and you're trying to cram something else into it, it's going to take a degree of power to overcome that lack of resonance. Resonance is key. Uh, you know, it's why I named the big beam Resonant Evil. <laughs> it's resonant. It doesn't take a whole lot of power going into it to make the thing work right. And more power just helps. But, uh, yeah, if, it, if you're relying on power and to the degree of the out of resonance, if you're relying on power to overcome lack of resonance, oh man, you're really hurting yourself. So, yeah, it's all about tuning it and making it right, making it ring on frequency. And, um, you know, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's examples of what a tuned system does in and around and through the mess in the real world, as you were talking about. Uh, compared to just looking things on scopes and in pictures and on on uh, in a shop, you know, you get out in the real world and oh yeah, yeah, all kinds of things manifest themselves in uh, in ways that we mm, sometimes expect and sometimes don't expect to bring. Right, I, a lot of people since I've been uh, now you've you've had a YouTube channel probably longer than anybody. I've been doing this stuff a long time too, but you know, you know before I left home. But uh, using a scope is, a, is an art itself, you know. You know I, I, I try to tell people on Facebook and other places, like, you know, in the public and on Facebook that, you know, if you just go out and buy a scope and think that you're going to tune a radio according to the books, you're going to be really, really sorry. <laughs> you're going to be O.P. Taylor. There's a whole bunch more to it, like what you do with your AC mod and your frequency responses. I haven't had one. People have said, oh, I don't know what's up. Yes, I no AC mod. That's a fraud. Was a I forget the year. It was 1985, I think. It was the first brand new CB radio that I bought. It was a unit PC77. I used to stop at Mauser in Mansfield, Texas, and modified transformers and various resistors and transistors to where I could input directly straight into the AM section to modulate the carrier. The only thing I didn't do was have a way to control the AMC on the AM radio section of the radio. And at that point, I know what you do, man, is awesome. It is. But what I seen was it was going to take a lot more work 
to be able to control the ALC and AMC on other radios. And by that time, the HR2510 came out, and then I used the heck out of those. But anyways, a lot of years have gone by, a lot of time. And uh, I'm, I'm glad we're in here talking, man, because I wish more people would pay attention to what's real. Because real world is the real world. And you can achieve that on a bench, but there's a whole bunch you got to know about it. Oh, absolutely. That's so true. By the way, I don't use an ASMOD. ASMOD is a fraud. The multilater is the real deal. <laughs> I just want, want to, that to be said. I, 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 you, you used the word ASMOD, and that's, that's that turkey down there in Florida. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm the original. So, uh, anyway, yeah. Um, ASMOD is a fraud. It's a great article. Anybody out there want to Google it, just Google. ASMOD is a fraud. And it'll come up. You can read it and enjoy it. All that kind of good stuff there. But uh, I, I know that was just a slip. Anyway, uh, yeah, shoot, man. I'm glad this is on video gate. I'm glad you're out there uh, uh, up in my receiver like you are. And there were a few little, you know, uh, oh, I don't want to say competition. There was no competition, but there were some other keys up in there here and there um, that you can compare quality versus uh, other stuff too. And uh, so it's always good to be able to get that stuff up in the, the eyes of people who are interested. And uh, eventually, a, a hard drive. Eventually, this stuff will catch on. Eventually, keeping it between the lines. You know, I, I heard a signal the other day that was amazing. Uh, it was, I think I posted, it was a short little video clip of, of Reverend Dr. U, uh, of um, Pennsylvania Pimp over there. And he did a, ooh-wee. And I have a little bit of stuff on my uh, sidebands. Ooh-wee. That comes up in there, but nothing like his video. You know, to see that little video I did. It's like a minute and 32 seconds long, but when he went, Ooh-wee! you saw those spikes go all the way up and, and down the band, and, you know, there was some stuff in the center between the lines, but, man, it just went on either side like it, and all that area under the curve of all those little spikes that were not on the channel that we're talking on. Like right now, when you're looking at my video or you're looking at your video of our audio, you're seeing our audio is in between the lines. And the energy content and the power, the talk power is all where it's supposed to be. And the watt meter is most likely going to register the power of this area uh, under that particular area under the curve. But when you got those spikes that are all out, multiple channels on either direction spreading out across the band, and you look at the energy it takes to make those spikes, the watt meter is saying, hey, I'm looking at all of the power you're putting out including these spikes, and I don't know what they are. I don't care what they are, but they're power, so I'm going to give you a reading. And then the people get a reading on their meter, and they think they got it all going on. But when they look at how much is actually on frequency, it's a different story. So hopefully this whole spectrum analyzer slash SDR slash pan adapter kind of a video gate system that people are going to these days, including myself, will depict where the energy is within the band and how it's distributed. And, and, and all that stuff. I don't mean to be keyed down to that long, but uh, I know we're on the same page. But like you say, I hope people see the stuff to bring. Right, right. By the way, I just want to let you know I apologize. And when you said that, I stood up, spun around in my chair, and then realized I had to spin back the other direction because I was wrapped up in my mic cord. <laughs> but I was saying the AC, but I apologize on that. Yeah, man, I've been trying to, you know, show this and prove it. And well, I, I realized forget proving it because that doesn't work. People don't want to hear it. But, yeah, I, 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 I have a lot of time and a lot of money in this. This meter that's sitting here was recommended by Tim Holt. Tim, you know, the engineer, the main dude over there at Bird Technologies, was actually looking at and trying to build me one. There was parts of it on his desk while I had this building down there in Florida. But time was running out, man. That's what was going to go all the way to my left, where you see my hot air, my solder sucker, and this bird meter. That's where it was going to go. That's why that section was there. But anyways... You know, he, he told me, and I got the emails, et cetera, you know, I was going to I'm going to try to teach people about what a watt is, what, you know, 0 0.573, 0 0.707, 0 0.64, DC heating was all about on some real test equipment, decent stuff. Oh, uh, there's probably some better, but the 4314C, the Tektronic scopes and the HPs, it's really good stuff. And yeah, I can solder, man, and I can tune wire, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm not bragging. I, I can't. But it, it's caused so much hate 
and discontent. And you'll hear it in my voice, because I get picked on a lot, man. You know that. But anyways, like we're talking right now, you know, there's a couple other video gates I got up, and they're on other pages where I can just do a screenshot showing a couple guys, like, look, man, this is what you're doing. You're supposed to be setting an example. You're a radio shop and a tech. Let's all get on the same page. This way, a barefoot radio can get out there and talk, because even though you don't see some of the stuff on the spectrum of the SDR, it's there, 20, 30, 40 channels away. And my radios, certain ones, not all the exports, but the ones I push now, I could hear a signal at negative 135 and below, negative 138 and below, you know, DBM. But if that signal is out there, completely wiping out the noise floor, then we, you know, if I'm talking to my radios, we can talk. Nobody else is talking, but we can talk. And that's kind of cool. I, I, I get goosebumps every single time I do that. But when there's a splatter box out there that someone claims that they know what they're doing and is getting out there and jacking shit up, it pisses me off, you know. Because a lot of time, a lot of effort and knowledge is put into these radios to be able to do that. Then you get somebody who comes out there with a Class C. They don't know what they're doing, you know, and they're just going, look at the meter. And they not even 20 is even on the right frequency. Oh, my time, my time out time. I went out from my radio there for a second. Anyways, I'm getting excited now, Motor Mouth Mom. I'm going to shut up, man. Enjoy the day, Mother Nature 2, 163, Mud Duck Station. We're clear. I could talk as long as I want to. I just got to watch my time out timer. Roger. Hey, I, I want you to notice on this video, babe, at, uh, at four particular locations so far, 23 minutes and 30 seconds roughly, at 24 minutes and 12 seconds, at 25 minutes and one second, or 25 minutes, and at 25 minutes and 50 seconds, there was a interesting little, you know, on the SDR, you can hear when you get that little and it just travels from one side of the screen to the other. You can see that. Usually it travels from the higher frequencies to the lower frequencies. And it could be anything from over the horizon radar to, a, uh, you know, RF generation to who knows what in conditions. It could be whatever it is. Anyway, this particular noise was something different. Unlike the typical little birdie that, you know, across the band, this is more like a white noise. And it started up high about uh, off the screen. Oh, by the way, that's one thing that the spectrum analyzer does when uh, over here is that you can't see the entire spectrum, whatever you, however you span it out. Whereas my flex, uh, even at 0.05 or 0.5, I can only see a, a channel and a half on either direction. I, I can't really see the entire 40 channels. A lot of the guys with the SDR receivers uh, can see an entire band and see somebody on six splattering up on 28 and all that kind of. I can't see that with the with the flex, but I do have the uh, HP and it will show me that I'm clean across the band. So I'm uh, I'm happy about that. But uh, um, look at those times and this white noise will kind of work its way down and settle just south of 27 to 85. It'll it'll start up off the screen. It'll come down. And it's wide. It's like maybe 30 kc wide, 20 kc wide, 25 kc wide. And it's got a really sharp shoulder on it. And it sits where the center of it is probably somewhere around 27,280 or, or maybe even a little bit farther, maybe 27,276 or something. Anyway, it's really wild. You'll see it on the video. I have no idea what that is, but it's happened four times so far during this video gate to break. Roger, Roger. I'm sure there's probably all kinds of people trying to key on me, right? No, uh-uh, no. And it's not somebody keying unless it's somebody's dirty transmitter. It was there. Just when I got off of the key, it was there again. Really weird stuff. I've never seen that particular pattern and that particular sound generated before. And it's definitely not coming from anything local here. It's coming from something outside, maybe solar, uh, sunspot related. I don't know what, but it's very strange. I can't wait for you to uh, take your, uh, give your, your uh, opinion on what you think that is. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But no, nobody's keen on you. You're in there all by yourself to break. Hey, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, after watching a lot of people with all these different SDRs and radios, you know, I'm not actually set up for it. I get, I'd have to do some modifications. I can use my other service monitor, to deal with monitor, 
But uh, I'd, I'd like to do it. I, what I do is look at that um, CB Radio Live. He's on Facebook or YouTube. You can see it. And I watch some of his stuff from time to time. I sit here. I, I need to be working. But uh, my laptop's to my left. And you know my bench. You've seen it. There's plenty of videos. But uh, I, I'm really thinking about doing it. Not to monitor my own because I can't. I'm, I, <laughs> I see exactly what's coming out the back of my stuff here going into this equipment before the antenna. So anyways, yeah. You know, I, I, I thought about getting a Flex, an SDR. I did buy one little radio, um, an MH something. I did a video of it, <clears throat> dissected it, and I was so disappointed. You know, it had to go back to China. It was the soldering skills look like some little kid sitting outside with the wind blowing on a picnic table. So I went back. But anyways, that's what I was going to use it for. All right there, Motor Mouth Mall. We've been bumping the gums a long time, probably, you know, irritating some people who don't mean to do it. But I'm going to get on out of here. I'll check out that video game for sure. And for the other guys out there, get in there with a screwdriver. Remember, it takes a lot more than you think. You get in there with a screwdriver, you're putting out less than more. you got to keep it between the lines. Can four. By the way, that noise is like about 10 or 15 dB above the noise floor. It's about 15 kilohertz wide. It's very square. It's equal amplitude from the left side to the right side with a little rise in the bass and the treble, and then a very sharp roll off. And it looks like it's come. It's got to be coming from somebody's transmitter. Somebody must be keying up. Um, it, what it looks like, I'm going to guess, is a really dirty radio with a VFO windup mod generating some harmonics because of a poorly tuned output filter and who knows what going on in the amplifier. And the amount of time it takes for it to sweep from one place to the other and where it ends and the, and the way it repeats itself over and over again looks like it's a, it's a, a byproduct of somebody up higher up off frequency uh, on some other part of the band keying up with a really dirty radio and a VFO windup and the harmonics caused by that dirty VFO wind-up equipped radio is showing up on this frequency. That's what I think. But I want to I want to see your take on this. It's it, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen on uh, on the pan adapter so far. I've seen that little noise that you know the RF kind of a, a birdie kind of a sound that trickles its way down across the band and it works all the way across to the channel and off the screen and on the screen. And but this is different. This really reeks of a dirty station and the VFO windup is causing the drift and the uh, but there's no voice associated with it. It's like a dead carrier and then there's no now you would think that if it was just a dead carrier with the VFO windup then there'd be a, a spike that moved. This is a wide broad sound. It's 15 kilohertz wide. It's probably seven and a half kilohertz of audio and it's, uh, it's, it's very strange. Anyway, I can't wait for you to see this video gate. All right, catch you later on. I'm going to get back on the side. i got to get back out to work. I was actually walking in here to get some tools and um, going back out to go work on the stairs on the house. And um, I heard the skip bowling, so I thought, well, I'd get up in there. I know this is 28. I know that I probably shouldn't uh, key too much on here with this uh, antenna SWR situation. But on the 5 8 wave, it seems to work okay. So uh, no big deal. But anyway, all right there, hard drive. Take care. Have a good day. We'll catch you later on. Motormouth Mall, working this under modulated Cobra 29 right here, right now. I got done. It's pretty decent. I got a little bit of stuff in there. I'm not barefoot. But anyways, yeah, man. It's good to know that there's others out there that actually care, you know. Some of us really do care. All right there, Motormouth Mall. You got to go do what you got to do. I got I to gotta get back to work, too. Be cool, man. It's my pleasure. 163, little bitty mud, duck radio in the desert. We're clear and moving on. All right. And by the way, I do hope you had some sort of a video get going. Do you have your phone running at all? Me? No. Oh, bummer. Okay. It would have been nice to hear both sides of the conversation, you know, even if you record like 10 or 15 seconds right now. But uh, it would have been neat to hear both sides there and, you know, compare one video gate to the other just to hear both uh, both recordings of the same conversation that break. Well, I just pushed a button there, Motor Mouth Mall, but I got to, uh, what I'm doing on my scope, I got to try to readjust it because it's too bright. You're going to hear my air conditioner is running. It's noisy in here, but uh, go ahead. All right. Sounds good. Well, just a little gate is better than no gate at all. So uh, anyway, yeah, good to talk to you there, Hard Drive. We covered a whole lot. For those of you who are hearing just this little bit of a gate, make sure you listen to the other full one on YouTube here. I'll be posting it later tonight. So and go ahead and listen to the whole conversation, and you'll get the, the, the meat and the potatoes. 
the gist of the drift, the meaning of life and radio as we should all know it and enjoy it. Motormouth Mall, your West Coast, under Modulated Beast. Right here, right now, I got down. Yeah, yeah, man, Motormouth Mall. I'm not sure how this is going to sound, but uh, I got a lot of noise in here, okay? A lot of noise. I'm actually sitting in the bench. All right. Looks like I got uh, 52 seconds left on my battery. <laughs> Motormouth Mall, be cool. Take care. 163, Mud Duck Radio. We're clear and moving on. All right, Roger, on the 52 seconds and counting, and we'll catch you later on, 7-3. So I'm going to go ahead and hit back to uh, um, 6.5 kilohertz just for fun. And uh, anyway, there you go. Hey, hard drive, Motor Mouth Mall, your west coast, under modulated beast, right there. Right. Oh, let me go up a little wider. Let me go up to uh, NRSC right there. Take a look at that for bandwidth. And 20 kc wide bandwidth and 10 kilohertz of audio. Radio station Motormouth Mall, your west coast, under modulated beast. Right there, right now. I, I was looking at my camera raw, man. Uh, I got one hour and 41 minutes left. <laughs> all right, man. I'm probably showing too much, but that's all right. I'm just a mud duck radio. I'm a Motormouth Mall. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. All right. That was good. Yeah, I got to get to work. If I don't, if I stay out here, we have conditions and we both have pretty much, you know, I guess unlimited key down time. So probably a good idea to get back to work and uh, say seven three is let the rest of Santa Maria and the rest of everybody else have at it. I'm going to get out of here. Um, good talking to you. Always a pleasure with the double measure. Hard drive, motor mouth mall, stepping right there, right now. Well, that was a double and a half. What was that? It was me. I said you'll be out here for a while. Oh uh, no, I'm going to be out in the field working on the house. I'm 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 walking away from the radio, so we'll catch you later on there, Smoke and Pete. All right, John. Talk to you later. Me.